Hi, everyone. There are lots of reasons to think Google I.O. is different this year, but one that's not so many big things to talk about. Hi, I'm Fitz, developer advocate and chief educator for Flutter, and I'm here on, on your screens. screens to talk through the Flutter and Dart highlights from I.O. Right up top, of course, is a new stable version. Flutter is moving forward, incrementing that version number to 2.2. That's great. I mean, it's got some nice symmetry to it, so I assume we'll stay here for a long time. But what does 2.2 really mean? Zoe said it best in the keynote. In Flutter 2.2, we are focused on enhancing the quality and productivity of Flutter. As a developer, even though Vim is my favorite editor, it doesn't give me feedback on my actual code as fast as I'd like. Yes, even with hot reload. And as an educator, anything that gives students clear indications of what's going on with the code is great. Asking the Dart analyzer and compiler to simply write all of my code for me might be too much to ask for, but the next best thing just might be sound null safety. Starting in 2.2, it'll be the default for all new projects. And as Bob says in his talk about why we added null safety, this can pretty dramatically shorten the cycle for finding some common errors and even improve your app's performance. The apps we build on The Boring Show might be boring, but what's more boring than a desktop finance app? But being boring isn't a bad thing, and Todd excitingly shows in his talk how to recreate an old app in Flutter with almost pixel-perfect perfection. And if you need to persist that finance data, Daco and Michael show in their talk how to use FFI Gen to be able to call into the SQLite C library from Dart. Of course, desktop apps are more than utilitarianism like expense reports. There's a lot of really interesting things going on behind the scenes to improve stability of desktop support in Flutter. This includes making it easier to run apps on desktop during development and improving the tools, widgets, and support for writing platform adaptive apps. Speaking of tools, isn't it really frustrating when your app has so many animated Marty McFly widgets that it simply crashes or skips frames? When that happens, as it did with Justin in his talk, what do you do? Well, to the dev tools. The team has been doing a lot of work to build features and tools that make it easier to track down a wide variety of problems in Flutter and Dart apps. A really interesting one to me is the new custom memory timeline events. Importing the Dart developer package gives you access to a plethora of cool debugging, profiling, and tracing tools. Included in this, post event, which DevTools picks up and displays in line on the memory timeline, hopefully improving your productivity in looking for when that particular widget was built. Suppose I gave you a programming assignment. Make a successful Flutter app. Just getting it to successfully compile and without memory leaks is not a guarantee of receiving a good grade. But what does it mean to have a successful or high quality app? For many people, that means having some kind of revenue source or allowing your customers to pay you. We've made improvements to the Google Mobile Ads SDK, like incorporating null safety and adding adaptive banners. Launched a new payments plugin that supports both Google Pay and Apple Pay and moved the in-app purchase plugin from beta to production. A lot of people ask us the question, so who's actually using Flutter? Well, in the developer keynote, we talked about how over 30 teams within Google have chosen to build with Flutter. The Google Pay team is a great example. They unified around Flutter, which cut their code base in half, saving nearly a million lines of code. And Google isn't the only one to go through a similar journey. Countless developers around the world have created and deployed successful, high-quality Flutter apps. We've also continued to add and improve on your ability to use other Google APIs and services within Flutter and Dart apps. One example is Dart on Google Cloud Run. Kevin showed in the keynote and dives into it in his talk that containerizing a Dart app takes just a tiny amount of additional code and then gets you a relatively tiny binary to run your backend. And on the front end, we teamed up with Firebase to create, special for I.O., an open source Flutter web app powered by Firebase services. You can find it at photobooth.flutter.dev, along with the code and links to code labs for learning how to integrate Firebase into your own apps. Phew, that was a lot. 
but we're never done. All of these features, improvements, plugins, and other updates come around because of the feedback you give us and the GitHub issues that you file or upvote. I hope you enjoy this year's I.O. And as always, for more on this and all the other widgets, head on over to flutter.dev. Looking for people to be on your screen who aren't me? There are so many other great talks and sessions from I.O. that you could be watching instead. Start with the links next to me or in the video description below.